Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and today we are doing some regenerative braking with a Nissan Leaf motor, which is impressive because it's not even in a car. Uh, we've been doing some uh, experimenting with bench testing a Nissan Leaf motor. Uh, the reason why is because it's pretty easy to get these Leaf drivetrains at salvage yards. Uh, they're just great pieces of equipment, and they're very practical to install in your own uh, DIY electric vehicle project. We just got to make sure that everything's working right to start with. Uh, when I first had this hooked up, I didn't even have a uh, high enough voltage battery power to spin the thing up, so I ran it on AC. And one of the issues with that is that I couldn't do regenerative braking because trying to send power back through a bridge rectifier isn't going to work. It was a one-way path from AC to DC. Uh, then in my last video, I did get high enough voltage. At 156 volts DC, we could run the Nissan LEAF motor, uh, but still I didn't have any regenerative braking. Now earlier on when I did some experiments, I did, so I knew the issue was somewhere in the software. So what we're going to do is go into the software, take a look at what we need to do to uh, tweak some parameters with the throttle and the regenerative braking uh, to get this thing to work the way we expect it to. So if we want to do any kind of programming over here uh, with the Thunderstruck VCU to the Nissan Leaf inverter, first thing we have to do is connect a computer to it. I've got my Mac laptop. I just happen to have a Mac. Um, this will work with a Mac or PC. Either way, it doesn't matter. You just have to run uh, a terminal application. Now, what I've got on my laptop right here is a program called Cool Term. Uh, it was one of the programs that was recommended in the Thunderstruck instruction manual. Uh, this is one I just printed off. If you want to read it, just go to the Thunderstruck webpage. It's a PDF. You can download it and read it yourself. Uh, but the very first thing is we physically need to connect over to the VCU. And to do that, I've got a cable, which is a USB connection on one end. And on the other, it looks like a stereo headphone jack. It's a uh, uh, basically just an eighth inch uh, mini connector right here. So there's a small hole on the VCU itself and we're just going to plug into there. And the other end is plugged into the laptop and I'm going to turn the VCU on. And right away uh, on the software, uh, we get some information popping up. It tells us the throttle and contactor are enabled. Now, the first time you do this, you have to go in uh, you have to check a few settings uh, to make sure you properly connect. In this case, uh, we're using that USB serial. Baud rate has to be correct. And there's a couple of settings right through here that you want to check as well. But since we're now connected, we can actually send some commands out to the VCU to change how it works. Now, this isn't real obvious how you do it. Um, one of the easy things you can do actually right away is just type help because when you do that, it's going to show you, uh, you know, some of the different commands that you can do in here. Uh, let's say I just type in show. It kind of shows me the basics. Um, it's up and running. It shows me the minimum and maximum voltage uh, for my throttle. Uh, some other information like that it's uh, set in the forward mode right now on the forward neutral reverse switch. And it's got some other information down here. For example, uh, our battery pack is at 190 volts right this moment here. So if I type in show config, it's going to show us uh, basically some of our different settings that we have in here. Uh, it's showing us we've got the Nissan Leaf inverter. Um, we're using a Hall Effect throttle and some other information. Now, when it comes to actually uh, the regenerative braking, there's three different uh, possible modes we can use here. And those are set with the, uh, the brake type command. So that is literally B-R-T-Y-P-E, brake type. And we will set this to Hall. Oops, how did I not do that? B-R-T-Y-P-E. Oh, excuse me, set brake type hall. And let's just do a show config again. Uh, so now here under brake type, it shows hall. So hall effect is uh, typically that's associated with um, a throttle. 
Uh, so for example, my little scooter throttle here is a Hall Effect throttle, and basically when you twist it, it's gonna give a signal between zero and five volts. Uh, if you set brake to Hall, what that will do is it expects um, a signal from a different Hall Effect sensor. So for example, you could have a brake pedal, and the further you push it down, the more of a signal it's going to send uh, to the VCU and the inverter. So essentially, the harder you press on the brake pedal, uh, the more regenerative braking you're gonna get. Sounds pretty cool, except we don't have that in this type of a setup right here, so that's not really gonna help us. Uh, one of the other things you can do is set brake type switch. And we'll show config again. So now with the brake type, uh, you would literally have a switch uh, where I've got the forward neutral reverse switch right now. That input is instead used as an input to let the VCU know whether or not the brake is being pressed. So for example, you could essentially uh, wire up um, from your brake light uh, to this input and the moment you touch the brake, it's going to start doing regenerative braking, except this is going to be at a set amount of regen. It's not gonna be variable. Uh, and right below it, we see break regen 100 Newton meters. We can change that. And uh, so if we were gonna put this into a car, maybe we would set all this up, go for a drive around the block and feel uh, how we like that break regen with just that switch. And if it's not what we want, we could adjust it with that break regen number right here. And the other option, for the brake type, and this is gonna sound a little weird, is just none. And I'll show you why it's weird. Set brake type, brake type, none. Show config. So now we expect uh, no regenerative braking when using the brakes, except we still want regenerative braking in this setup. So let's say you were, um, let's just say this was for an electric motorcycle. I want it so that when I let off the throttle, it automatically starts doing some regenerative braking. And, you know, personal preferences, maybe I want it heavier or lighter, but I want it to do at least a little regenerative braking when I'm not pressing the accelerator. And Nearly every electric car is essentially set up like this, with the exception of cars where you can literally turn that off through the software. But typically the de default is to at least give a little bit of regenerative braking when you're all the way off the accelerator. So at this point, we've got no regen whatsoever. And actually with this on, if I spin this, Um, certainly I don't have any regenerative braking and it, it seemed as though the throttle was still applied when I let off. And I think what's happening here is it's just not getting the proper feedback because there's literally no load on it. So I did discover what I have to do here. It's a separate command. This one is called idle regen. And that's kind of a weird name because first of all, electric motors don't idle. So it, it feels weird to even use that term. Um, what else is a little confusing about this is there is another setting uh, that uses the term idle with the UQM motors where you can actually use it with an automatic transmission and set up the motor so that when you're not applying the throttle, it still spins uh, the motor at a set speed. So this was a little confusing partly just because of the terminology, but let's take a look at this idle regen command. So we'll do um, set idle regen, and then we'll give it a number in newt meters, let's just say 100. And we'll show the configuration again. Here we go, right down here. And instead of being under brake, we've got no regenerative braking set up with brakes but we do have regenerative braking set up associated with this idle regen command. 
So essentially that just means when you're not pressing the accelerator, how much regenerative braking is gonna be going on. So I've got it set to 100 Newton meters. I'm just gonna double check here. Looks like I got a cycle power uh, to the VCU here. Check everything. Just do a show config again. Okay, there's our idle regen at 100 Newton meters. Uh, now I do have that clutch disc over here and part of the reason why is so that you can see the spin better. I put some white chalk on there and hopefully if I spin this slow, uh, you'll be able to see this okay. Let's give this a little spin. So just very low RPM so we can uh, see it spinning here. And what I'll do is I'll bring it up to speed and then I'm gonna let completely off the throttle. And as you see, uh, it slowed down pretty quick. That was obviously far quicker than, than just not applying power to it anymore. So let's give this motor uh, a really good twist of the throttle. Now, another thing here, you might notice this big strap. I actually have the entire project strapped down to my workbench. Uh, you have to keep in mind that the rotor has a fair amount of mass to it. Uh, so especially if you have a round motor, just sitting on a desktop and you spin it, uh, the rest of it's gonna spin the opposite direction. Uh, it's not so bad with this kind of squarish blocky motor that we've got here, but especially, you know, you got a warp nine or something, uh, please keep that in mind. So we've got the strap down before we give it a big twist. Again, you can see the white chalk mark on there. Uh, let's take it up and then bring it back down with the regen. <laughs> So uh, looks like that's actually working pretty well. Let's change the settings here. Let's go back to, uh, so right now our idle regen is set to 100 Newton meters. Let's change that. Set idle regen. Uh, well, let's just try taking it up to the maximum. Now, if I say I want it to be 501 Newton meters, it's gonna tell me, sorry, you can't go up that high. Uh, the system's only designed for between zero and 500. So let's do 500. Set idle regen 500. Entered it. Show our configuration. And there you go, motor inverter, idle regen at 500. So we'll spin up the motor and because it's more regenerative braking, uh, we're going to see this rotor stop faster this time. Uh, one thing that's actually a little interesting there is with that maximum regenerative braking with essentially no load on it, nothing more than that clutch disc, uh, it actually tightens down hard enough that it bounces back at the end. I don't think that's going to be an issue at all if this was hooked up to literally anything else, transmission, wheels, anything. But just kind of funny that it's actually powerful enough to um, kind of get a little backlash at the very end there. Let's spin it slower this time. Again, that maximum 500 Newton meter regen. Let's do a big one. So it looks like by just playing around with these settings a little bit more, um, I've got my regen. There's a couple of other settings in here, like you can set what your maximum voltage is for regen. Uh, you live at the top of a hill, um, you just charge up your batteries. You don't wanna drive down the hill and try to put more voltage into the battery. So there's a, a maximum voltage setting that you can change and a couple other settings in here. But for now, it looks like I've got pretty good control over this. Um, let's check one more thing. I did notice one thing I thought was a little odd. I'm going to put the motor into reverse here. And when I tried this before, I didn't get any regenerative braking when I was running in reverse. So let's try it, see what happens. Nope, it's just, just coasting to a stop.
and again, I'm getting kind of that weird issue where I let off the throttle and it appears that it's still getting a signal for forward. Now, I think, again, that's just because there's essentially no resistance on this. And because there's no resistance on there, it's, it's not quite reading the signals right. But as it is, um, in this setting, if I put this straight into a car, I, I'd be a little worried about um, backing up in it, frankly. I'll play around with that a little bit more, see if I can get that working. Uh, the other thing this would be a concern is, let's say, for example, you wanted to install this Nissan Leaf motor backwards in a car. Let's say the whole thing just fits nicely into a, your old Volkswagen van or something like that with it spun backwards but not forwards. I'm not sure exactly how you would deal with um, not having the regenerative braking in forward, which is exactly what you would want it to be. So I'll play around with those a little bit more. And then after that, we can see about actually getting this into a do-it-yourself project. So that's it for today. I hope you like watching these videos. Uh, it is a fair amount of work for me to make them, but I do like learning new things and sharing it with other people, just getting it out there. Uh, so please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, really, the more people who watch these videos, uh, the more it helps me to be able to make more. Uh, we're also on Patreon. On Patreon, uh, you can see the videos before everybody else does. Uh, and we also have some behind the scenes materials and other little treats on there for you. Uh, now on YouTube, uh, please make sure to hit that little notification bell. And in your account settings, make sure that you actually have it set up so that you do get the notifications. That is something you have to enable. And then uh, you'll be sure to get these videos as soon as they come out. So again, I like, hope you like these. And until next time, stay charged up.